laser sights increase confidence regardless of experience level. Whether you're learning the fundamentals or overcoming aging eyes, Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, now available on iTunes and other podcast clients and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android. Feel free to call Tom now at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN or 866-825-5486 or email Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, once again, here's Tom. Well, once again, we will be getting back to Tom, but it's going to be about a week or so. <laughs> Tom's in Argentina hunting, and uh, actually, we've got him duct taped up in the basement of the studio, oh, and we just we just always wanted to commandeer the airwaves, so... <laughs> he said we could do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's why we don't have time to... He is, he is hunting in Argentina, and he will be back live next week. Um, so, he let uh, Michelle and I kind of take the reins. So we're just going to have fun with it. Uh, how was your week shooting-wise, Michelle? Did you get any in? Oh, yeah. It, actually, just before the show today, doing a little bit more practice. And, Did you? Yeah, absolutely. What, Can, were, you, what were you shooting? Well, <laughs> 327. <laughs> no, no, no. No? Old school. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Well, because we're part of the uh, skirmishing association, North-South Skirmish Association. We were, we being my husband and I, were out practicing with our uh, Smith carbines this morning. Ooh, what is, what's a skirmish? I mean, I think of skirmish as like a bar brawl or something. Oh, <laughs> well, that could be one kind. <laughs> it, could, yeah, it could lead to that. Yeah. Right. So we shoot a series of clay targets, the ceramic tiles, any type of uh, surprise target they want to throw our way at a distance of 50 and 100 yards. And it's team based. So you're assigned to a team based off of, I guess, your shooting time skills. And it's a matter of you lining up with your team. They say go, hitting the most targets you can, helping out any kind of team member who is having an issue hitting all their targets. And fastest team wins. Now, is, is it just reaction type targets or is there any paper? No, it's, well, there can be paper targets, but that's an individual. So everything that we do that is competition based is all, I guess, instant gratification breaking targets. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love them. Gotta love them. Yeah, yeah, nothing now, better. Now, is it uh, caliber category? Did they break it up in caliber or is it, is it open caliber competition? It, it, it's based off of what. Several different types of guns can participate. There are Henry rifles that can participate. There's mortar shooting. There's Enfields. There's muskets. Uh, so it just depends on what you're intrigued with. Smoothbore um, is one of them. I only participate right now, <laughs> I say right now, in the carbine event. But there are people that uh, shoot several. My husband, for instance, is, takes part in the musket, carbine, and smoothbore competitive rifle shooting so now, now you refer to your husband is that the gentleman sitting next to you as our yeah. technical consultant yeah, today that's this handsome guy sitting over here yeah yeah he's got a face for radio doesn't he <laughs> could, could get a mic on him next time hey uh we're we're expecting to uh, talk about some m1s that uh, there's eighty six thousand of them coming back from the philippines yeah. and a lot of people aren't aware of this it it's we're not getting guns from the philippines we're getting our property back right so and we're really not sure the condition of those and we're hoping that we get a Mark Johnson gets our message and gets back to us so we can get him on the air because I had a lot, of, a lot of questions for him. You are heavily involved in the CMP, uh, Michelle. You took me to Camp Perry last year. I was a newbie. A newbie. I was a newbie. <laughs> I felt so <laughs> stupid. But it, was, it was great. It was, it was like a kid in a candy store oh, for me yeah. because it was something I've never seen I, and really opens up your eyes. But the biggest thing, I mean, I saw a lot of cool stuff, but the biggest thing I saw, and it just kind of reinforced my take on gun people in general, Everybody we talk to, everybody, I mean, from 13-year-olds to adults, super polite. Yeah. So, yes, sir. No, sir. I mean, and, and not stuffy, just decent folks. I didn't see any troublemakers, nobody with their pants sagging under their butt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and, uh, and you were looking. <laughs> yeah. yeah I was like, so I ended up doing that just to, so there would be one person there. But um, talk a little bit about the CMP because I'm still still gathering info. I just think it's really cool, and, and I don't think a lot of people know about it. Right. Well, for those people who may not even know what CMP stands for, it's the Civilian Marksmanship Program. They are located in a couple different places across the country. They have a huge fantastic facility that they have just opened in Talladega in Alabama that I understand is just an amazing electronic target uh, comprehension facility, hoping maybe we could get something like that here near Port Clinton at Camp Perry. But they do host several matches here at Camp Perry. And then, of course, we go into the NRA, who has a high-power series intermittent with that. So I guess anywhere from June, late, uh, yeah, late June, early July into August, you can uh, see people out there shooting competitively. And, of course, with the CMP, there's air guns constantly. There's all kinds of air gun matches yeah, see, that are going on with juniors and, and adults. And Yeah, I didn't even realize. I was going through their website, and I saw they've got uh, an air gun category. So, you know, being an air gun aficionado, <laughs> I decided to sniff around a little bit. And uh, they actually just had their nationals in Colorado this week. Um, air gun's really cool. Now, the American Legion helped sponsor their air gun category. And that kind of hits home because I'm real involved with the Legion. We were just at our last meeting talking about doing something for youth mm. to get them started. I got started. My, my gun experience goes way back to being seven, eight years old in the Sons of the American Legion. And they had BB gun traps set up in the basement. They'd have competitions. Yeah. And, you know, it was a big deal. Right. You know, looking back on it, it was probably five kids sitting around in the basement with a couple of adults. Uh, but that was huge to me. Mm. And, that, and that's what kind of sp- spurred the whole interest. So to see that the, the, how far that's gone... Right. It's a little bit different from the Red Riders to the, uh, to the air guns we <laughs> yeah. get today. Yeah, it's progressed a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Would, I would say that. So uh, I, I'm glad to see them involved in that. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll get a hold of Mark here in a second. He can give us a buzz. Um, but right now we're going to head out to Pennsylvania, West Leechburg. We've got John who's got a, a couple questions. Uh, well, I'll probably be banking these questions, but uh, let's have it. John, what's up? Well, thank you for uh, having me on, uh, Mark. Sure. Uh, no, Jim, right? Yep. Yeah, the, um, the, the question I have is actually for, is it Mark from the CMP? I'm up, I used to shoot CMP uh, years ago. Oh, cool. And, um, matter of fact, I bought my first M1 Garand through the CMP. I paid a whopping $165 for it. <laughs> wow, did you get taken, huh? <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't begin to tell you how many years ago that was. Anyway, the CM. Uh, now that we have a more gun-friendly administration, mm-hmm. I would like to know if the CMP will be releasing the uh, 1911s, 45 ACPs, Ooh. to the public. That's a that's a great question. You have any idea on that, Michelle? I have no idea. I haven't heard anything about that. That's why you're going to have the gentleman on from the CMP. It'd be a great question for him, <laughs> right? Yes, it would. Yes, be. Really, I'm going to, going to bank that. Now I know that the uh, the military contract is kind of along the same lines. The military contract for the Beretta has expired, and they've gone with the Sig. Is that correct, Michelle? Y- yeah. So I'm thinking you're going to see some Berettas, some 92s becoming available pretty soon. Um, can't answer your question directly on that, John, uh, about the 1911s from the CMP program, but um, we will ask um, Mark as soon as we get a hold of him, and uh, I think we just we just goofed up our times or something, but we'll, we'll get a hold of him short, 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 easy for me to say. Right. Yeah, we'll get a hold of him. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping they can offer the uh, M1 Gurns at the same price. Yeah, Gosh. 165 bucks. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll stew on that for a while, and uh, we're going to take a little uh, profit uh, profit break here because you got to pay the bills. You know that. So we'll be back very, very shortly on Gun Talk. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. 
Every crossbreed holster is handmade based on the design invented by our founder. A Kydex pocket molded around your gun for perfect retention. Leather backing for comfort. Specially designed clips allow you to tuck in your shirt for complete concealment. The highest quality mag carriers and belts sturdy enough to hold any gun. Our holsters come with a lifetime warranty and two-week try-it-free guarantee. Crossbreed. Conceal and carry the cross. Crossbreedholsters.com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition, and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. We are back on Gun Talk. Jim and Michelle's newly commandeered Gun Talk. Right. Tom hasn't called in and requested to be unplugged, have we? Do you, yeah. think, do you think we should even let him call? If he calls in, should we put him on the air? Oh, think? Well, yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> we could take his question. Tom Gr- <laughs> Grasham? Grusham? Grusham? What? How do you say your name? Well, Who are you? Instead, let's go out to North Dakota, I believe it is, and we're going to be talking to John and Fargo. How's it going, John? Good afternoon. And you guys are doing a fine job, but I will say if you duct tape Tom up in the corner somewhere, you better have used that gorilla tape. <laughs> <laughs> the new T-Rex or gorilla, right? Either That's one. right. That's you right take, take your pick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, the last gentleman hit on, he started to hit on my subject, you know, when he, when he talks about the loosening up of some of the uh, egregious things done against us gun owners. And to follow up that other gentleman who was, you know, concerned about his concealed carry, you know, in other states, I'm a North Dakota Class 1 CCW holder, which gives me reciprocity, if I can say that word, in 39 other states. I'm also a range safety officer, so I practice and train, you know, probably more than the average or probably more than I should some weeks. And I'm urging people... We have a gun-friendly administration in the White House in the name of Donald Trump, and we need to call our representatives and our congressmen, our senators, and push for national reciprocity to put an end to this madness of the patchwork network. Well, and I think you're right. We can't just sit back idle and anticipate that President Trump is going to take care of all the issues that we have. Uh, You know, it can't... I don't know. You you just can't hit home enough how important it is for people to still stay involved, even on the smaller state side of of options that we need to introduce. I know we're going to be talking a little bit later with some guests with um, school issues and concealed carry and, and how they go about protecting their people. But, yeah, we got to stay active, got to stay vigilant and, and move forward, help move Vigilant. Vid- what did I say? Vigilant. Vigilant. I, I, I thought yes, like, as a village, we need to move. Wasn't that there a- you go. It takes a village, Michelle. I'm going with that answer for about 485. <laughs> Vigilant. I'm so I sorry. I like Vigilant. Maybe what? those sit, start what? singing YMCA or something. Is that- <laughs> but, but that is where it starts. And I, yeah. I, and, and I can't urge people enough. It takes two minutes of your time to Google who your representative is, who your senator is, and send them an email demanding that we get national reciprocity because we have a president that we know if it hits his desk, we will see his signature on it. Well, and I'm going to take that one step forward farther because I don't, I don't think just that is enough. I think those phone calls are still important and I think you know some of your handwritten letters are are just as impressive when they come across. So whatever we can do to 
bombard them with numbers of how big of a concern this is for us is what we need to do. Whatever it takes to get the job done, right? Right. And I also think a lot of the times a telephone call is great because if you can get through, you'll be talking to a secretary, obviously. Mm -hmm. But enough people drive a secretary nuts. Even if it's in frustration, she says, hey, will you listen to these folks? You know, right. You know, I've I've had it up to here with them. (laughs) But the bill you're talking about is H.R. 38, John, and it's the uh, Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act of 2017. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I think it's got a pretty good shot at it for several reasons, not only gun-friendly administration, but uh, so many states go in constitutional carry now that it just, you know, it makes... Now, some of them have, you know, little caveats where you you can constitutionally carry if you're a uh, resident of the state. Right. So, I mean, but that's even a start. You know, it's, it's a starting point to to kind of... Uh, get where we want, where we're heading. Right. The conversation is at least happening and, and we need to encourage that to continue on. And, you know, it is very confusing as one of the callers made very clear earlier in the program is you don't know where you can and where you can't carry. And I, I know when we travel across country, when we go west for hunting, you know, we we map out our itinerary around a couple of states that we aren't allowed to carry in either. It, it's not an easy it's not an easy thing, but because that is what's important to us, the the concealed carry and being able to carry, we'll go out of our way to wrap around your state, which means a loss to them. They're not getting revenue. They're sure. not getting gas. Sure. They're not getting food. They're not getting all these different things. So Yeah, well, another aspect of that is you said you map your trip around it. Now, just to clarify for some listeners, you can carry a, uh, you can transport a firearm to any state in the Union. True. From point A to Unloaded, B. yes. Unloaded, separated from case, ammo, et cetera. Yep. Right. Uh, that's a lot different than carrying. Right. So unless you wanted to pull over before each state line, I just think it's, re- personally, I think it's ridiculous how, you know, I'm zero criminal record, totally clean. It, Having to ask mother, may I? Yeah. And then, and then I <laughs> do six inches over this imaginary line and now I'm a potential felon. Right. Yeah. So that's don't, just nuts. Don't swerve. <laughs> and, and I've watched you drive. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, the thing that's that's kind of weird about the um, the whole um, transportation thing is it boils down to to the officer if you get pulled over and someone wants to check you out and say you know are you transporting any guns etc. And again, even though I think a majority of that boils down to your behavior. Right. How polite are you to the officer? Everything else. I mean, so many things can be diffused as opposed to I know my rights. I'm not rolling down my window. Right. I want my lawyer. Well, I, I think the same is true even when you're a person who has a concealed carry license. Obviously, if you're caught speeding or for any other reason pulled over, that officer already knows that you are a person who has a concealed carry mm-hmm. license. So, you know, you tell them I'm a concealed carry person. I do not have the gun on me or I do have the gun on me. And and I think probably depending upon your attitude there, too, they'll be like, OK, great. Thanks for telling me. Or, OK. Hey, where is it? So they have an idea so they can be more, uh, I guess, watchful of your motions. But, you know, to make it very clear, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going after my wallet. It's in my left pocket, whatever. Yeah, or, or to better let yet. them know, to ease a situation. Sure. Better yet. May, may I reach for my wallet? Right. Et yeah. Cetera. Yeah. The, the police friends I have that I've talked to, uh, they do know that you're a concealed carry permit holder by the time they get you a vehicle. That doesn't let them drop their guard down by any means. Right. But. The conversations I've had, they know you're one of the good guys or good gals. Right. The likelihood of them having trouble is a lot less. And and as long as you're not screaming, I've got a gun, something <laughs> stupid, because people do stupid yeah, things. Do. You know, yes. I was told in my class, I have to tell them I have a gun. Well, yeah, there's a time and place for everything. Right. Um, my traffic stops I've had, I go out of my way to get traffic stopped just so I can practice these, by the way. <laughs> uh, the insurance the tra- company loves yeah, it. The traffic stops I've had is... Uh, by the time that the officer gets to the car, I've had my permit and my license in my hands, on the steering wheel, both hands open. I'm doing this for all you listeners at home. You can see my hands, right? I, I can see that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at least somebody can. So he's got them at the, at the 3 o'clock and at the, yeah, go yeah. ahead. All right. So, I mean, they, they, they see there's nothing in your hands. That's for his protection, but it's also for your protection. You don't right. want to be reaching. You don't want to be doing something silly. Uh, and you can diffuse so many things right off the bat just, just by your behavior and your manners, et cetera. Right. Um, and I don't want to beat a dead horse because we've talked traffic stops before, but it's common sense, people. Right. Just, just don't follow do- what they say. Yeah. Think about it from the cop's perspective. You're pulling over somebody. You don't know if he if he's out to take your life. You don't know if you're going home that night. No rash movement. Yeah. So I mean, you, that's the best thing. Sure. Sure. And, and you're you're going to want to keep an eye on him. And if you know he's a carry permit holder, at least, you know, doesn't mean he's a saint, but it means he's 
never had a felony. And that means that he's been checked out by the FBI. He's been fingerprinted by the county. He's been photographed by the county. Pretty, pretty good feeling that he's probably not going to start breaking the law today. So with that said, I'm done pontificating. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's. Uh, we're going to head out to uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where Steve's been patiently waiting for us. You got a story about a uh, SR 1911. What's up? Yeah, I uh, was fortunate and I won a SR 1911 Ruger mm-hmm. recently, just a few weeks ago. Nice. Yeah, and I have a physical problem, so I had a little hard time working it, and my wife can't work it at all. So I decided to sell it and get something really beautiful. Well. I decided on the Henry Big Boy 41 Magnum oh. in brass. Oh. And they just, yeah, the, the sale to gun covers the purchase of the Henry Big Boy, but the problem is they just introduced it in April, and it's sold out already. Mm. You can search the whole nation. You might find two at, you know, $900. Well, I'm not paying $900, but I just, you know, thought it'd be interesting to let you guys know that. That. You know, people are spending more money to get the brass than they are the uh, the blue. Well, they're far prettier. Yeah. <laughs> just coming at it from a woman's perspective. But no, it, Henry is just making firearms that are unbelievable. And they are probably the sole leader right now of any kind of lever action rifle that is being produced and readily available. So, yes, with their newer released guns, they are outstanding. You know, March, April, there's a little <clears throat> three twenty seven caliber. I'll look at my husband. Three twenty seven. Yeah, I'm not that, familiar with that caliber. <laughs> that I'm kind of interested in and again it's just having the patience because it will eventually come available henry is a great company at staying in contact with their customers and i have no doubt even if you gave them a call steve that they would tell you approximately when it might be available and i as a store owner i know can call them and say hey this is what i'm looking for where can i go to find it so they're a great company to work with well hopefully that helped you out steve You are listening to Gun Talk with Michelle Cleland and Jim Kenzie subbing for Tom while he's out gallivanting again. Gallivanting. Must be nice, but he will be with us next week. We're at about the midway point. We're at the hump of the three-hour show. So stick with us. If you've got any questions, give us a call at Tom Talk Gun. Give us a call. Let us know about your favorite three three ways, threesome thing with a pistol, (laughs) pistol, shotgun, and rifle. We'd like to hear what your three favorites would be. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. Gun Talk encourages you to support the local sporting goods store, gun stores, ATV dealers, and other local businesses in your area who advertise on this station and Gun Talk. Only together can we protect our rights. You're listening to Washington Times Opinion Page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. Or in today's case, you're listening to Jim Kenzie and Michelle Cleland filling in for the world-renowned Tom Gresham who's out gallivanting in Argentina, you know, just hanging out, doing some hunting. Well-deserved break. If anybody deserves us, that gentleman. We've got, uh, we've got Michelle Cleland here hanging out with us today from Cleland's Outdoor World in the wonderful Swanton, Ohio. That's right. Glad to have you. And Chad, can you give us a wave here, Chad? Can you, can you just Chad waved <laughs> to take my word on it. We always talk about training, and Chad actually has trained me. He's the best trainer in the area that I know of, unless there's somebody else going to come in the room that I have to placate. But in the meantime, <laughs> he's, Chad's an excellent trainer. He's got a tremendous resume, and we're uh, we're going to get him on the mic one of these days. We're going to get him to to pipe in here. In the meantime, he's providing us some technical support if we need it, uh, which is cool. And speaking of training, he, he being an outstanding trainer, training is crucial. We talk about it all the time on the show and the after show. And we have a guest that I think is going to kind of parlay this into the next step for us. We've got Rich Grassy from the Tactical Wire. How's it going, Rich? Pretty good, sir. How are you? Oh, we're doing great. You've got Michelle Cleland here with you as well. Hi, Rich. Hello. Give us uh, give us a quick nickel tour on uh, Rich Grassy, your background, and what is the Tactical Wire? Well, um, I think we'll start with the most important part, uh, part of this first, uh, 
the tactical wire. Uh, part of the uh, Outdoor Wire Digital Network, uh, which is an email uh, newswire service, uh, free subscriptions, Tactical Wire appears twice a week in your email box if you take the free subscription. It's for the, um, uh, the self-defense practitioner, but also for law enforcement and military uh, and security contractors, That pretty much that group in the industry that supports that group. Uh, we also have the shooting wires, you know, and the outdoor wire. Right. So that's that's the lowdown on the tactical wire. That's what it is. And um, my background uh, was actually has more to do with law enforcement. That's where I got the uh, biggest part of the training I've had over the many years was uh, inside uh, the agencies and going to academies and and uh, going to national conferences and presenting and things like that. I um, have been in media, outdoor media, since the mid '90s. Uh, wrote for Harris Publications and and uh, for Law and Order magazine, and uh, took up uh, writing the Tactical Wire in 2008. Great. So if anybody wants to catch up, they can go to the TacticalWire.com and find out a little bit more about you. Uh, it seems to me that you folks are, are industry in touch very well. I mean, you have a lot of press releases and updates and events that you cover. So it's it's along the tactical lines, but it's, it kind of opens people up to a lot of stuff they may not be aware of uh, if it wasn't for your uh, your publication, which is cool, part of, part of the Wire family. Uh, you folks uh, always uh, present the uh, 555 drill. Can you explain what that is and why that's crucial and why maybe Michelle and you could probably go back and forth on this a little bit, uh, why uh, holster practicing is an issue at gun ranges? Well, actually, the, um, the 555 drill was written about by Ed Head, who's a friend of mine, mm-hmm. and a gun sight instructor and retired Border Patrol. He wrote about it in NRA Shooting Illustrated magazine, came out uh, in their online edition uh, on April 4th of this year. And basically, it's five rounds and five seconds from concealment, drawing from a holster that is concealed and your target is a playing card. Um, this is not the thing you jump into, one of the first things you do, but it's kind of a, a checkup. It's the kind of thing you'd probably do a few times a year. You'd shoot it cold, mm-hmm. because if you shoot it after practice and you warm up, it's kind of a waste of time. It's, it's just a thing to let you know where you're at. If your problem is in the draw, if it's in trigger control, uh, control of the recoil, uh, getting a good view of those sights. One of those things, that's an issue. But that's kind of the rundown on the drill. Okay, and, and how far is that playing card from you? Five yards. Five yeah. yards. Oh, hence feet. the five. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yep, five, five, five. And you do a lot of work with uh, blue guns and various brands of uh, substitute guns, shall we call them? Uh, well, yeah, the, the, I think the problem, the, the problem, the reason I wrote the piece I wrote in the tactical wire, I read the piece that Ed had had written about this drill, and one of the comments uh, from a reader had to do with uh, be, having to go to ranges in which they were not allowed to draw from a holster. Which is pretty it's common, isn't my, it? It's very common in, uh, in commercial ranges around the country. It's a very common thing. And it's very common because uh, people do not practice with holsters in either drawing or even more critically, safely reholstering a gun, which uh, turns out to be the pattern of the problem. Right. And then, of course, there's always that issue, and this comes along the lines of of drawing from the holster, you know, when you have a gun live with ammunition, which is the way most people want to practice this drill. You know, if they go out there and they pull from a holstered position and aren't trained enough to keep their finger on the side of that slide until you're ready to shoot and you're on target, you know, the potential for a misfire becomes extreme. Yeah, you can let one go before you're ready. Right. That's certainly a problem. Uh, not uh, going from concealment, a huge problem is is catching the gun on the holster or the cover garment losing the grip of the gun and have the gun fly out ahead of the firing line. And I think that's a bit, that's a big problem for them too. Right. People try to get in a hurry. Yeah. Right. So does your company focus solely on using the blue guns or do you recommend? No. Okay. So the, no, rec- no, it's, 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 it's basically, it's a, actually it's not my company, but 
it's it's a thing. It's something I've used over the years. I got into using training guns when I went to the National Law Enforcement Training Center in Kansas City uh, and trained with Jim Lindell on the handgun retention system taught to law enforcement officers. We used uh, model guns. They were cast aluminum. Uh, in the article I wrote, I showed a blue gun. I didn't show one of our uh, Lindell training guns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, But we use that a lot for dry practice in terms of drawing from the holster and reholstering. Use a fake gun. You can do that anywhere. Uh, that, that people won't look at you and think you're nuts, basically. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think they look at us and think we're nuts a lot for different reasons. <laughs> that's probably the- true, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, now- I'll go along with that. <laughs> Wise man. Hey, talk a little bit about uh, reholstering, if you would, Rich, and how important it is. I think think it's overlooked so often by people training. It's as a afterthought. Yeah, it's. Um, I think when you when you train with people, uh, some of the folks at Gunsight, the uh, Sig Academy, uh, Masada Youth Group, uh, any of the big Dave Spalding, handgun combatives. That's a big thing. Uh, great training company and a great guy. They're very concerned about people reluctantly reholstering, and I think that's the best way to put it, is be reluctant to put that gun away. You know you're going to have to. If there's been an event uh, on the street, uh, and it usually happens in parking lots, it seems, anymore, where you've had to draw a gun, whether or not you've had to shoot it, at some point you're going to have to put it away without unloading it or doing any of those other things. Mm -hmm. So. You need to reluctantly do that, slowly reholster. You don't jam the gun in the holster. And the best thing is to clear the cover garment first and get it completely out of the way and look the gun into the holster if there's enough light to do so. Uh, the advantage to practicing a lot with a cover garment and your duty rig, whatever you carry as a concealed carry practitioner under your license or constitutional carry, and a blue gun or a Lindell training gun or any of those fake guns, you can get them also from uh, Blackhawk, I believe. Uh, the great advantage is you can look the gun into the holster all those times, and after a while you will build up the neural pathway. If you have to holster without being able to see the holster, you'll be able to do it. But you have to have the finger off the trigger, and it's also a good idea to have your thumb on the back of the slide if it's a semi-auto, or on the back of the hammer, if it's a revolver. And uh, that uh, keeps from pushing the automatic out of battery, causing a problem. And if you feel a hammer moving on a revolver or a hammer-fired automatic, you can stop the holstering stroke, get the gun out of there. Gotcha. And get whatever problem is squared away. Rich, I'm uh, rolling musing on us. Can you hang with us just for a second? Sure. All right, we'll be right back with more Gun Talk. At Stag Arms, our firearms are built to exceed limitations and push boundaries. The Stag 10 and 10S from Stag Arms offer recreational and avid 308 shooters better accuracy and performance. Custom design forgings give the Stag 10 and 10S tighter tolerances and a modernized style, all while retaining the strength of mil spec parts. Each model carries Stag Arms transferable lifetime warranty and infinite shot barrel guarantee. Find out more at stagarms.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. There's only one place where you can buy that firearm you've always wanted and turn it into your very own. That place is brownells.com. Now offering a huge selection of firearms from all your favorite brands. Brownells is the spot to buy online. When you're choosing your gun, be sure to look over the enormous selection of parts, accessories, ammo, and more to make that firearm your masterpiece. Brownells.com. Serious about firearms. The Black Hills. There's nothing like it on Earth. The kind of place where characters become legends. 
Wild Bill Hickok, Crazy Horse, Calamity Jane. Pick any part of the world and you'll find people go there to make it their own. But this is where people come to get made. This is the place that made the people who make the best ammo on earth. Black Hills Ammunition. And welcome back to Gun Talk. I was just going to let that music roll for a while because it's a great piece. <laughs> Rock and roll. We're talking today with Rich Grassy from the Tactical Wire, from the whole Wire family, actually. But the TacticalWire.com is where you can see his articles. It's a, uh, a great training uh, resource for you. Rich, we were talking a little bit about holstering and reholstering. Michelle's got a couple of questions for you I'd like to throw at you, if you don't mind. So one of the one of the questions I have, Rich, is obviously if you purchase one of these blue guns, which is a brand, like you said, there's Blackhawk, there's other manufacturers out there. You know, when you decide what kind of firearm to choose and the holster, obviously, as we change seasons and some people change the way that they carry and you change your holsters out, how critical is it to go back to this initial training of, of drawing and reholstering? Well, I recommend sticking, finding a holster and sticking with it because there's a considerable, as you know, a considerable curve, learning curve, and and actually comfort in wearing a particular holster. Some types of holsters, uh, you need to wear it in a dedicated fashion for some period of time before it becomes a part of you. Uh, The old Alessi ankle holster is is, uh, an example of that, but generally speaking, uh, if you change holsters with seasons, again, not something that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You need to go back to the uh, to the training gun. Uh, you have to go back to the dry practice. You can use a um, the uh, shot timer app uh, that they have for uh, smartphones to time your draw. Uh, set it up for a part time and a remote start. It gives you a start tone. You draw it to uh, to a target. To, to aim at a target. And with the uh, Rings Blue guns, some of those are notched. The rear sights are notched. So you can actually get a sight picture. Ah. And uh, if you've done that before the timer buzzes with the part time, then uh, you do that 10 times in a row perfectly, then you can draw back the time a fraction of a second, start at two seconds or something, three seconds, whatever's your, your thing. And once you get 10 in a row at that, just start running the time back. Yeah. But yeah, you do that with every holster that you're gonna that you're gonna rely on. It's right. a very essential piece of equipment. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, and these holsters do become molded to you and your firearm. Yeah, they, the more they, they use them, and, and the more yeah. you, the more yeah. you carry. You know, I guess one of the things that we talk about often is is doing this draw and reholstering in front of a mirror, so you can use a mirror. But one of the things that my husband and I have discussed doing as well is the use of video, even with our smartphones, to see where we are potentially wasting time in yeah, in the draw. Good. What wasted movement is there so you know it, is it necessary i mean somebody could use their actual gun making sure that there is absolutely no live ammunition anywhere near them and still practice the holstering and and draw correct you can the the uh, aside you mentioned not having ammo in on or around the gun no ammo in the room where you're practicing be inside a room, it's probably a smart idea to have a lock on the door Mm -hmm. so somebody doesn't just walk in. Mm -hmm. Do not answer a phone in the middle of practice. All those things uh, are a thing, uh, are a big issue. Plus making sure that the area you're drawing into will stop the projectile that is most likely to be in that gun if you make a mistake. Excellent. Because an exterior wall on a house often won't do it. Right. Rich Grassy from the Tactical Wire, the tacticalwire.com. Thanks so much for stopping by Gun Talk today and uh, help us out. Give us a little bit of insight on uh, proper way to train and uh, check out the tacticalwire.com. I think you're going to find a lot of cool information there and uh, kind of give you a little bit different perspective on stuff. This is Jim Kenzie again filling in for Tom Gresham with the lovely Michelle Cleland. And we'll be right back with more Gun Talk.
Welcome back to Gun Talk. Jim and Michelle from the after show filling in for Tom. I don't know why he didn't show for work today. He just didn't show up. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I'm glad that we were here to take over. <laughs> yeah, what would he done without us? Probably kept hunting. <laughs> right, as he probably is. <laughs> yeah, that attaboy. We're going to head out to Oregon and talk to Ken. He's got a uh, question on a savage. Ooh. Ken, how's it going today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. I have a little bit of a cold. Uh, it's that time of year again. Right. Um, my first thoughts was about your three-gun mix. Yeah. Um, that you were asking about, and I'm a cowboy action shooter, and I'm kind of in the preference of a single action revolver, lever action rifle, and a double barrel shotgun, only because I've gotten very proficient with it, and I have actually had the opportunity when I was down in California, we were shooting a cowboy action match, and we challenged the local police officers to a match against them. Ah. Uh, they were using Glocks, Berettas. AR-15s, and their pump shotguns, and we kicked their butt. <laughs> that a boy. So for those guys that say automatics are the way to go, uh, if you're proficient with your single actions and your lever actions, you can beat those guys with the automatics. Oh, no doubt. Now, you have a problem with a 62 you're talking about. What's up? Yeah, I. <laughs> we have a tradition with me and my granddaughter and my, my, my daughter. Every Easter, we go out and we have our own kind of Easter egg hunt. We take our 22s. I have a Henry lever action, and my granddaughter has a Henry youth model lever action. But my daughter couldn't handle that because of a carpal tunnel problem, so I bought her a Savage Model 62 22, and she kicks my butt with this thing. <laughs> oh, I see what the problem is. <laughs> well, so I decided, okay, I'm going to get even, so I went out and bought one for myself. <laughs> and it's identical to hers. It's got a little four-power scope on it. But I'm having a problem with the thing keyholing, and I can't understand what the problem is. I've tried five different manufacturers of ammunition. I've tried um, 50 yards, 100 yards, small targets, and it's random, but the more I shoot it, it seems like the worse it gets. Well, I guess what I would have first said was, try some different types of ammunition. You've obviously already tried that. And of course, just to be clear on what keyholing is for some people who might not be familiar with it, it is where the bullet actually tumbles, <clears throat> excuse me, and goes through the paper sideways. So I would say possibly some things to look out for this would be if there is a lot of lead buildup in your barrel, you know, making sure that it's nice and clean. You can get different types of solvents specifically for lead removal. Um, if you've done that and that's not an issue, then possibly take it to somebody, you know, that can look down the bore. They might have a bore scope. Uh, there could be an issue with the with the bore itself or maybe the with crown the crown. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I do know for a fact the very best thing that you could do and the best way that this could be taken care of is by calling Savage. They are an outstanding company when it comes to customer service, and they will take care of this without any problem whatsoever. Uh, hopefully that helps you get to where you need to be. But as far as your daughter, yeah, hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have a Savage uh, um, Trophy Hunter uh, 270 that I've had great success with, and they're a great company. Yeah. Um, but I, this was such an unusual problem, I couldn't figure out between the two guns why one would and one wouldn't. Yeah, I would say have that checked out. Call Savage for sure and uh, and get their return, and, and they'll take care of it for you. Yeah, and, and once they've helped you out there, Ken, uh, ship it off to the studio and let us verify <laughs> that uh, they've, they've done the work as they said they would. And uh, just because we like to play when we can, too. Come on, cut us some slack. <laughs> Tom Talk Gun, that's the number. Tom Talk Gun, give us a buzz. Talk about your favorite three-gun combo, rifle, pistol, shotgun. Jim and Michelle will be right back with more Gun Talk.